This podcast was made possible by Hot Source Yoga. Are you in Santa Cruz and looking to get or stay fit? You gotta check out Hot Source Yoga in Aptos. It is by far our favorite yoga studio with lots of classes to choose from, and they even offer childcare. I've been hitting the Hot Source Yoga Sculpt, and I've never felt or looked any better. And guess what? They also offer a 30-hour Hot Pilates teacher training online so you can get certified from the comfort of your own home. Ready to make your own dreams come true? The founder, Nicole, is also a life coach miracle worker who has helped hundreds of women and girls empower themselves to make their dreams a reality. Nicole offers sessions in person or online. Use code SHAMELESS for $20 off your first coaching session at NicoleDuke.com and be sure to visit HotSourceYogaStudio.com to see why it's our latest obsession. I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and, and enjoy, enjoy the show. show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. Mm. You are listening to a Pleasure Podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit PleasurePodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Happy almost 2020, everyone. No matter when you're listening, it's probably now 2020. Or maybe you're listening in the year 3000. Because we've been around that oh, long. Yeah. What do we look like then? 2022. We would be dead. <laughs> maybe we'll live that no, long. No, we could be frozen <laughs> like Walt Disney. Do you think that... That could actually happen. Like they can extract and like make a replica of Walt Disney, and then he comes back to life, and we have more. Never and we'll be like hands. Walt. Why in the Little Mermaid did you create that boner scene with? He the- didn't. That was the illustrators, <laughs> the why? Imagineers. How did you miss that? <laughs> How did you miss he the was, boner? He was busy, dude. He was totally doing some Disney things. Um, so. Hello, everyone, and um, this episode is on love knots, not spelled K-N-O-T-S. It is a specific form of rope bondage that is heart-centered and connection-centered, and um, it's someone who is here in Santa Cruz, actually, so it is an in-person interview, uh, and April and I really don't know very much about rope bondage at all, and I don't know if we've ever done an episode on it. I don't think so. Yeah, I do love being tied up and does that count yeah that counts <laughs> that totally counts and it, it's interesting because if you're not a rope person i think there's still some takeaways in terms of connection and you know, he talks about breath and all these things that you don't have to even have rope for but rope is just one of the modalities for the art or for the connection too but if you're not a rope person there might still be something yummy here for you and funny story about um amy what happened Amy has a black eye right now oh, because yeah. she got into a minor car accident. And so she looks really awesome, like a tough a tough guy over here. I look real good. You're a tough guy. I mean, so... You look like a, a, look a badass. Like, you're like, dude, you should see the car. I mean, I was thinking <laughs> about coming over here without any makeup on. It's just like... Well, I'm, you sent me a picture. It's pretty you're purple. You're still so beautiful, but Thank now you, you just look like very tough, like you did a kickboxing class. Yeah, I got <laughs> hit. So I told people I got in a fight with Santa because I was like, "What, Hanukkah? Have you taken up MMA fighting in, yeah. your, in the in the during the holidays? Yeah, get out the aggression." That was what happened. Totally. No, the story is pretty lame. I was uh, reversing and I rolled the window down and I was yelling out the window at someone. Not yelling. It was like telling them yourself. You left your cell phone at my mom's house. And hit my head, or no, hit my bumper on another bumper, and it hit my head on the window, and <laughs> got a gash. Probably could have got some stitches. So I, I'm happy that you're okay, though. Thank you. I like and it. I mean, it's my very first black guy. My very first time, I probably needed stitches, but didn't get them. So I think it's healing nicely. Have you put any arnica on it? Yes. Okay, good. Yesterday was the first time, though. <laughs> oh, Amy, <laughs> I'm not. You should that. also be drinking arnica tea. What? That's yeah, because it heals you from like the inside. If anybody doesn't okay. know what arnica is out there, it's a really beautiful medicinal herb. It's all natural, and it is really effective for speeding up the bruising process and for muscle aches and pains. You can use it for massage. It's really nice. My mom's friend, who's an esthetician, said to drink pineapple juice. It's good for bruising. Oh, well. I never heard. There's also- so many theories. Well, arnica, they like Native Americans used yeah. it in tea and to to heal internally. Um, I used I used it last night and 
Um, and my God, I never know the na- the label to say, but my 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 uh, person that I'm really in love with. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's deep. I've never even said that about my partner. My partner commented on that too because he's like, "Oh, Amy's talking about." how in love with her partner she is. He's like, you've never done that about me. I'm like, well, yeah, that's interesting. I'm like, but I call you my partner on the air all the time. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've heard you say some really nice things about him on the podcast. No, I'd say nice things about it, but I've never been like, I'm so in love. <laughs> is he like, do you really love I'm me? Like, I'm like not as, I feel like you're such a, ho- like a, not a hopeless romantic. hopeless romantic. You're romantic. Like you have like, you go, romance. you're open heart human. I'm more like a, I'm scared of my heart. I'm still scared, but yeah. if I'm being met with another open hearted person, it's really easy for me to go into that place. And I'm being met with a very open hearted person who's just fearless in sharing all parts of themselves. And um, so it inspires me. And so that, and so I can go there. But if I'm with someone who doesn't have the capacity for that, is it interesting? Yeah. Then I shut down. I do, you know, I'm afraid. Um, so I'm just met with that where it just inspires me. I'm just like, all right, here's all of me. I mean, my uh, ex-husband, he was super, super open-hearted, like all th- so much love all the time. And it was really hard for me because I didn't ever have that growing up or from family or past partnerships. It was never my first real long-term relationship. We were like bros. Yeah. Like, yeah, bro. We like... Like wrestle and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, for real. Um, <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. And this, we this were bump. just like, we were homies that like ended up high five. dating for six years. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time to be homies. High five. Yeah. High five. I'm like, just do me doggy because <laughs> <laughs> I need to use my vibrator. Because <laughs> you're my bro. Because so you're my bro. So I don't want to right. No eye contact, please. <laughs> no, Thank you. Too vulnerable. Oh, shit. All right. Um, anyway. Before we dive into the podcast. Enough though. about me. So we have a sex <laughs> question, but before we dive into the sex question, I want to say, um, We've received a number of emails from folks talking about the episode that we did with Trip Kramer um, from the How to Talk to Girls podcast. Um, And I'm going to read one of them and I'll share the two other ones. So this is from a listener. Hi, I've only listened to a few of your podcasts, but I really have enjoyed listening. But your latest guest, Trip, seemed a little bit of a toxic douche. I stopped listening when he said men still needed to be dominant while in a long-term relationship. I was excited to listen because I thought I could learn something coming from a quiet and anxious 23-year-old male. At the least, I think he could have used a different word than dominant, but still, I look forward to hearing the next podcast. Uh, So this is one person. Um, Another person that I know who is a uh, a cis woman, um, cis female, she said that she thought that it was interesting, but some of the tactics seem a little manipulative. Um, And then I also have have someone, that um, another cis male that, that shared uh, that there were some things that he actually really agreed with. And I think that the challenging thing for a lot of folks is the, uh, and that was also very hard for me, was their generalizations. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was, I mean, we, when we went into that um, podcast, like uh, initially <laughs> like I was this like, is really, this is yeah. what we're doing? Yeah. And I think like, I, I, I took it from this, um, from a perspective, and I'm sorry if I interrupted no, you. Um, I took it from a perspective of like, okay. We all are entitled to kind of have our own process in the dating world, in the sex world. And our goal is to bring like this shameless and really open and, you know, coming from this place of self-love a lot of times Mm -hmm. um, part. And there was some stuff that was kind of triggering for me. I was like, wow, that feels very misogynistic. But at the same time, I was like, okay, like this exists and uh, I'm not going to to, do change trip. Right. And so, uh, there's pieces I feel like that are really valuable that could be taken away, uh, and, and used positively. And I also do think that there was stuff that is harder to digest and that could have probably, yeah, been, 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 uh, uh, presented maybe in a different way. So other folks wouldn't be triggered by it or, or feel, yeah, the generalizations are hard, hard when you, it's it's the same thing as like always and never where you, I think he used a lot of those too, is that men are like this, women are like this, and this is how you do it. But he's speaking to a very specific type of man. Like he said, I don't have, you know, super hot, confident men who are, are listening to my podcast or who are coming to, to work with me. I'm working with the people who, um, are either, you know, really afraid and just lacking confidence or they're maybe not super attractive. And so they don't really know how to get out there. And, 
Um, and I was talking to someone about this the other day about um, at, for being a you know a straight woman and my attraction to dominance. This person in this thinks you didn't like the word dominance. And I get that. So the word I use is it's more like strong masculine mm. instead of dominance. And strong masculine to me is you can either have it in your physique and I can be really attractive and you don't need it in your personality, but I can still be like, all right, you're holding something in the strong masculine. Or you don't have to have it in your physique, but you can have it in your persona. You know, this this confidence, this like, you know, I can still be a, a smaller dude, but I can be really attracted to your personas. And I think confidence is the best. Totally. I think that's I'm, I'm the, saying, the key word there. I'm so I'm saying what Chip's doing, he's talking to people don't have either right he's like you don't have either of these things you're str- a straight dude who wants to date women and it's a generalization to say all women are attracted to dominance or yeah. strong masculine and i will say a lot of them and maybe most straight women are looking for some form of strong masculine so maybe not dominant or some form of, of, of a confident human yes confidence confidence yeah. is like, like the feeling like i got this right and, and you know and i'm sure that, that, that again that's a generalization too so I understand that why some people will think he sounds toxic and I will actually agree that there's certain things to, because it's left for interpretation in the way that people could run with it and it might actually could be harmful mm-hmm. with generalizations like that. Um, and I think his intention overall is probably good um, for what he's trying to do out there and he's, I think he probably really is helping people. And he did have a lot of good stuff with consent that yes. I did approve of and I was like, awesome. Like that's, yeah. you know, that's important mm-hmm. and that's an important part of uh, the story because he is talking about all of this dominance and consent needs to be addressed yeah. and I think he is doing that well. Yeah. So... And just uh, with that, you know, the last thing, like we, you as from Shameless Sex, we like to give all of the perspectives why we're reading this now you know, or like when we say something and we get an email from a listener who's like uh what you said i don't agree with it's hurtful we also read that too because we want to give everyone a voice Our, hey we're humans we're yeah. not robots yeah. and we learn from mm-hmm. people being suggestive or you know we don't have a comment box yeah. no we just read the, the email is our email yes. <laughs> email us and tell us so we um, have a new email too i don't think yeah. we've ever said it on the air but now we're the gmail.com one we actually grew a few new emails. So info at shamelessex.com if you do have anything you want to share yes. or we love positive reinforcement, but we also take suggestions. We take all the other things. Yes. All right. You ready for a sex question? I think so. I think so. Okay. So I've told April a little bit about this one. So this is from a listener. says, I was diagnosed with bladder cancer with a reoccurring bladder tumor and chemo and radiation were no longer options. So they advised me that a cystectomy should be done ASAP. So the doctor seems very happy and asked me how I feel about the news. I say to him, well, let's see if I understand. So I will probably live at least a few more years, but I will never ejaculate again and most likely will never get an erection again. On the positive side, I should be able to orgasm again once I regain my libido, except that once a penis, once was now a penis, is now a two-inch piece of hanging skin that has no function. And you built me a second asshole so I can pee into a bag hanging off my belly. That's what happens with these gnarly surgeries. Um, I'm sure that will attract a lot of women, and I will be fighting for an opportunity to, that will be fighting for an opportunity to sleep with me. That's sarcasm. Um, so, to answer your question, I don't think I'm very happy. So, mm-hmm. here's my questions. On a recent episode, both of you spoke about the hot octopus solo essential, but it's apparently sold out with a ditto on your store at purepleasureshop.com. With a ditto, sold out. Yeah, oh, they're sold it out. was sold out. Okay, yes. I get it. Yes. Um, then I read about the Pulse Solo Lux and the Pulse Duo, and on some random website, the Pulse Three. They're all the same thing, aren't they? Well, the Pulse Three. Never mind. Okay. I'll tell you in a minute. So here are my questions. <laughs> It claims to be ideal for flaccid penises, but my problem extends beyond flaccid. I'm working about 1.5 to 2 inches for lack of a better description. Sometimes I refer to it as turtle because like a turtle, the head sometimes disappears into its shell. Do you think these products might be effective? Question two. Have you ever had the opportunity to jerk off a, a penis that small? It seems almost impossible to do. Question three, are any models available for sale? And can you recommend which ones? I was thinking about the duo on the unlikely chance I luck out with a companion. Uh, and I'm I'm a please her. And I, if I ever get so lucky, I would hate myself if I couldn't reward her. Okay. So this is more, I mean, just talking about the, the surgery and there's a lot of obviously shame and, and there's a big change and I totally get how hard this is. But he's asking specifically about the product. Right. Uh, and 
thank you, first of all, for being so vulnerable and for sharing your story to this listener. Um, and I praise you for being that courageous and sharing. And this is obviously, I am not a doctor and obviously I, um, work with a penis toy company that has medical technology behind it. We're not allowed to make medical claims based on our licensing agreement. So I will give you that disclaimer. However, the pulse plate technology that is in the pulse products is, uh, backed by medical research. And what that research shows is that, uh, it was oscillation was tested on folks with spinal cord injuries initially. So in, in Denmark and, uh, the oscillation causes involuntary ejaculation in penis owners. Now of the folks with spinal cord injuries during the, the research, there was about nine years of research behind this, uh, s- about 62% of the patients could achieve an erection and or an ejaculation. Now, of course, those things aren't necessarily simultaneous and they're not necessarily always, one isn't always following the other. Sometimes they can happen independently, uh, mutually exclusively, however you want to think about it. I would say it's worth a $99 investment to, and you actually get uh, 15% off at purepleasureshop.com. Um, they will have it back in stock. We were sold out uh, of the Essential, which is uh, the $99 version of the Pulse. And that is a newer product that just launched. We should be restocked, I really hope. Um, and perhaps um, we can shoot you an email back when that comes in, or I can um, actually hold stock for you to make sure you can get one of those. Um, the Pulse Duo is great. That's um, the two motored product. I would recommend starting with a smaller investment because that's $150. And of course, there's no guarantee that this is going to work for you. I can't ever tell everybody is different. I say, try it at least three times, purchase the product, try it at least three times. I've heard that the body sort of adjusts to this, uh, to the, and I've read, and I ask, I ask a lot of questions to penis owners that use the products, uh, so I can give good advice and, um, the testimonials are always really interesting to read. So of the people that use it, they usually say the first time can feel a little strange. The second time feels a little better. And then the third time it actually has a wonderful effect on their body. So I think it's worth a shot. And I would say, start with the essential. Uh, the pulse Lux is the essential, uh, with more, there's, uh, a remote control and there is a, a bit more functionality and more power, more uh, RPMs. So, so I would start just with the smaller investment, especially if you're not sure if you're going to enjoy the sensation and that it's going to be effective for you. Um, so that is my piece with hot octopus. I, I really um, hope that, that you do find some pleasure from that. I would, that would, bring me so much joy. And, uh, I'll let you answer the second question because, yeah. um, I've been talking now for a little while. Well, no, well, <laughs> I think those are all great. You know a lot more about these products than I do. And, and so yeah, like April's saying, you don't have to have an erection to have an orgasm. You can have, so, so in that sense, you know, with the, the pulse products, you can let your, 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 your flaccid, and now you're saying it's, you know, 1.5 to two inches. So we're talking. It is for frenulum stimulation is where it's designed, head. right? Yeah. Which there's 4,000 nerve endings and I'm not sure. It sounds like you lost some nerve endings. Exactly. Really, yeah. So I'm not sure exactly how much nerve endings you lost. There's 4,000. You could, hopefully it will be effective in stimulating the head, but it is designed for the head. But so I, what I would say is when you touch this, you know, flaccid skin that you still have, you called it the, you know, two inch piece of hanging skin. Do you feel anything? Is there sensation there? Maybe there's no blood flow, but do you still feel sensation? Because if you feel sensation, then a lot of things are possible. Yeah. Maybe there won't be an erection, uh, but any sort of vibration there is massaging and and can lead to pleasurable sensations. And maybe it's not even orgasm, but you feel pleasure. So, yeah, like April said, trying the the pulse or trying anything that vibrates, like any powerful vibrator on the head of the the cock. If you know, try the pulse, and if it doesn't work for you, then then you know, try out. There's make the it a fun po- exploration. The pocket pulse is also a one that it's oh. it's not uh it's not the oscillator. It's two vibrating oh, motors, yeah. and you can use that flaccid. And that's a better size. It is a stroker though, so it does. It, it becomes, there's no medical research behind uh-huh. that one, but it does uh, help if you can achieve an erection, particularly with that product. However, if you just want some vibration instead, you could try the, the pocket pulse because you could use that product flaccid. Yeah. And the part about have you have the opportunity to jerk a penis that small, um, 
I have not. It's funny. I've been talking about this, covering this conversation, but micro penises keeps coming up in my life lately. Um, and I don't know what the definition of micro penis is. And I think people abuse it and they call any small penis a micro penis, which can be just, it's just rude. And not, it's shaming um, to a lot of people. And I think there probably are such things as micro penises. Um, I have definitely touched a very, very, very small penis, in my opinion. I don't know if I'm going to call it a micro penis. Um, and it could get hard. You could stroke it. But so this is the fifth thing is like to jerk a, just a little bit of skin that can't get hard is not going to be really jerking. It's not like the same kind of thing you see in a hand job. It's going to be more like erotic massage creativity using probably more the pads of your fingers and things that you wouldn't normally use if there was more to work with or more hardness. So it's just, again, Getting creative. If you have sensation, get creative. Start practicing with yourself to see what feels good for you. And then you can guide you know, new partners and things to see what feels good for them as well. Um, so you're in a new place. And what happens when our bodies change and our sexuality changes is that we have to change with that and figure out what works now. And I'm really sorry that you went through all that you've gone through and you're in this place. I know it's really, really hard. and I'm, I'm, I feel for you. Uh, and, I, and I think that maybe with some curiosity and exploration, you might learn some things. And to go for question number three, just to touch on that lightly, the models that we recommended, we already hit on a few, but you did ask about the duo. And the thing is with the duo, it has the vibrating motor on one side of it, the oscillating on the other, and then the remote that controls the vibrating portion. This is great if you want to create sort of a... a a foreplay mechanism with a partner that is a vulva owner, let's say. So it's designed so either the vulva owner can lay on top or think about cowgirl style, let's say. So they're on top and they can kind of grind on the vibrating portion while you're experiencing the oscillating portion. Or you could do missionary style. So that product is designed as a foreplay toy. It's not designed to use during insertion. It would it would either be used until orgasm or until you want to use it. Sex is whatever you want it to be. So until you feel like you're done, uh, and then you can remove it. If the penis gets hard, awesome. If not, you can play as you wish. So this person, he's saying that he, bre- he probably will never have an erection again. So Got it. to me, and you're only doing 1.5 to 2 inches, so that, I don't, that's not going to work for you. Well, it would actually be pleasurable, though, if he, if, he, if they have, have someone sit on top of it. It doesn't have anywhere to hold. He, he can't, it can't grip on his body and then have someone else sit on top of it. Or if if uh, it's uh, if it's if it does end up because I don't know it it fits almost any penis size so one size fits most I don't know uh, you are right it does have some capability though to sit on if if the body holds it in place for grinding I just don't think it'd be good for this human I think like for other people who have can get some blood flow there if you're using it so that someone else can straddle it then that would make sense but if you were working 1.5 to 2 inches and you don't have any blood flow i say just start the essential yeah, they, so i just wanted to address that part to yeah. let you know kind of what that looked like and what that product is about but you probably have a great point yeah I don't, uh, which i, I didn't you'd be disappointed didn't necessarily to, yeah. yeah definitely i 100 percent agree with amy and i would start with the essential um which is it's actually it's a smaller mold as well so it probably would be a better fit and that's just about you getting pleasure which is great so and then you can get you buy other things so he said he's he's a pleaser of the the ladies that he plays with so get some other toys to please and if that one works and you have a partner showing up have them use that product and and use it on you uh put some lube on it yeah Lube it up. Lube it. Lube it up. Uber lube. Well, you know we love uber lube. And so and one thing, too, my mom actually just commented on this. Mom, who owns purepleasureshop.com, she said, she's like, you guys need to share more about the uses of using silicone lube with silicone toys. Um, and, and I was like, well, I can't really put that in like the ad. But um, So just to comment on that very briefly, people, um, there is a understanding that you're not supposed to use silicone lube with silicone toys. Our understanding is that you can probably use most silicone lubes with silicone toys um, as long as you wash it within like an hour or two and you wash it thoroughly and it's not guaranteed, but the issue is usually when you let the silicone hang out on the silicone toy, I just it call it, it down. marination like a you steak. Don't, yeah, you don't, don't marinate. marinate it. Just some, wash your toys after use. Sometimes yeah. I wash my toys 12 hours and they're fine, yeah. especially if you're using really high end, like the Fun Factory silicone, the Hot Octopus silicone, yeah. um, you know, some of the other products that we've talked about on the, on the show uh, that use high grade, 100% medical grade silicone. Uber Lube is a, is 
my trusty. However, if you do let it sit on there for a week, you will notice the silicone can bubble. And we don't warranty the silicone yeah. because silicone should last forever. But really, y'all, you should be cleaning your sex toys after you use yeah. them and don't just go and let them sit after a week. Throw them in the sink and just put some soap and water on them right away. It's Res- easy. Respect your sex toys. Yes. Okay, let's read a bio. So Edward Wiley has been leading a local rope bondage meetup group in Santa Cruz for many years. He combines his passion for rope and his longtime practice of Aikido and Sheng Sheng Zen. I'm going to call that Sheng Zen. His experience with these two arts, he probably says it on the podcast, his experience with these two arts of unconditional love provides a foundation for teaching how to cultivate open-hearted connection and awareness. He's available for private movement and meditation sessions at his business, Open Hearted Coaching, and recently launched a new offering for cultivating love together with rope. Go visit not-love.com. That's K-N-O-T-love.com to learn more. Uh, He works with people online. He actually teaches people how to use rope over video online, which is kind of badass. I don't know anyone else He has a great voice, too. I think he did radio. He did radio. Because his voice is, it's really deep and it's penetrative and it's very sexy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. He's wonderful. So we're going to dive into that. But first, before we do, we want to share a little information about something called Dipsy that we love. Uh, we get emails from uh, listeners all the time, and I see clients all the time. And then one of the number one things I'm hearing from women are, um, I'm not connected to my desire. I'm not connected to my arousal. I'm not connected to my body. How do I get into that? Especially if they've been in really long term relationships. Um, and we have discovered this program called Dipsy. It's an online program on an app on your phone that has these short stories that are super sexy and erotic and you can listen, you can walk down the street listening to the hottest thing ever in your ear and get really turned on. And this has been changing people's lives. Um, So we love it. Our listeners love it. Our clients love it. And you know what? What I've been doing, which is awesome, instead of turning on the TV when I get into bed at night, Uh I've been turning on a sexy, erotic, dipsy story. And it not only works for me, but my partner loves it. So listeners, Turn off that TV and turn on some Dipsy. And Dipsy just made tapping into your arousal even easier by offering you, our Shameless Sex listeners, a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash shameless. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash shameless. And now, back to the show. All right, everyone, it is interview time, episode time, this time in person. Um, As you know, April and I live in Santa Cruz, so it's uh, not often that we get to record in person with people. I love recording in person, too. It's like a totally different dynamic and vibe, and we don't have to share a mic, which is also nice. (laughs) So A little more professional. Yeah, and it's nice because it feels more conversational than when it's Skype and you have a delay or some weird feedback. Yeah. So, So, And my dog was welcoming you with leg biting and and uh hand biting so welcome welcome, welcome from all of us yes welcome from legend hello thanks for having me on your yeah. podcast amy's yeah. like is he humping you I'm yeah like, I I hope get, not. Off. get off that's, that's not a true welcome right there we're so we're happy to have you here so i know you from workshops that you have taught at pure pleasure uh and now you're teaching um, you continue to teach the, your workshops and your not love workshops that's k-n-o-t everyone not love mm-hmm. Um, and our listeners, they probably, I think, I think our listeners probably don't know that much about rope bondage. Maybe some of them do. And April and I don't really know that much about rope bondage either. Definitely not, but it's super interesting to me. Yeah. And I'm excited to have you here yeah. to enlighten me. Yes, let's learn things. So to start, can you tell our listeners a little more about how you got to be where you are today? Your interest in teaching um, real, uh, heart, I think you call it heart centric rope bondage, uh, and yeah, and you're I mean, obviously you have an interest in in it in your own practice too. But how did you get to where you are today? I probably started in Boy Scouts. A uh, well, Boy Scouts, <laughs> that's what it's for. It's we were for tying people. each other up. Nice. Oh my god, that makes perfect sense. I never thought about that. So I really loved knots and, and ropes back then, uh, but never like tying people up. But I do remember when I was a kid, I wrapped ropes around myself and kind of enjoyed that constrictive feeling. And didn't do a whole lot of actual rope play. Mm. Um, got involved in the kink scene in actually mid-80s. 
And um, but it wasn't until I came to Santa Cruz actually that I um, started to get more into rope. I took a, took a, a rope class at Pure Pleasure, yeah, oh. and it was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was with Midori, oh, yeah, and I was with a friend. Or actually, I wasn't with a friend. I made a friend there. We we, we were the ones we were paired up together, and uh, and so we became friends. And then a few years after that, we went to another rope class together, and we just enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. And we decided to start our own rope meetup. Mm. And so we asked, we actually went, went to Pure Pleasure and asked if we could, we could hold, hold it there. Oh, yeah. We weren't uh, rope experts or of any kind. We just, we liked rope. We were, you know, kind of good at it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but we really liked, I really liked teaching. Mm-hmm. And um, I really like building community, mm-hmm. and we just wanted to be around more community and more rope stuff, and share what what we know, and we just had this idea, and that was uh, mm-hmm. what, almost five years ago. Oh wow, it's been that long. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. It's awesome. been quite a run. Yeah. Uh, just started a little project, and so, but that was so for the first four years, it was just running these rope meetups. I have another background. Um, which is in teaching an open-hearted movement and meditation practice. Ooh. It's called Sheng Jen. It's, uh, it was called the Qigong of unconditional love when mm. I first went to practice. And actually, I saw that word, unconditional love, and I was like, no. <laughs> like, I'm a dude. Like, what do I want to do with an open heart full of love? Like, that sounded lame to me. Mm. Something that old ladies petting cats would do. <laughs> but I ended up going to this workshop, and it changed my life when the, when the teacher told me to open my heart to the whole universe mm-hmm. and I went from being really shy quiet a little anxious and nervous and closed off and kind of angry uh, to becoming really outgoing and personable and I started dancing and making friends and connections my whole life transformed from this open heart practice mm-hmm. and so I, I became a teacher been to 10 teacher trainings traveled around the world going to workshops with Master Lee the, the, the principal teacher and I have a business called Open Hearted Coaching where I do private and corporate uh, open hearted uh, training mm-hmm. and so at the beginning of this past year my girlfriend said well why don't you combine the two mm. combine your open-hearted coaching with your rope meetup stuff and i mm. kind of joked I, yeah i'll call it not love k-n-o-t <laughs> love you know kind of a play on on, on words mm-hmm. and it sounded i was kind of a joke yeah and then so i was like okay well i'll just build i was going to build a website for my open-hearted coaching practice and so I said, I'll, I'll practice with a not love website. Mm-hmm. And so I actually, in a couple of days, I never built a website before. I built this not love website. And then within a week, I had my first private client mm-hmm. uh, teaching, teaching this, uh, what I call not love, uh, tying hearts and hearts together more mm-hmm. than just limbs to limbs. Mm-hmm. And it's really taken off. Um, there's a lot. There's a few terms people use for shabar or for for rope play. Mm-hmm. Sh- shibari is the most common one. Mm-hmm. It means to, to tie, a Japanese word. Mm-hmm. And you can shibari a package. You can shibari your shoelaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually, it kind of has a decorative feel. Another word people use is kinbaku. Kinbaku means to bind tightly. Mm-hmm. And that's more of the bondage restrictive aspect to it. But there's another word that I introduce, which is called musubi. And I think musubi is is more more fundamental to rope play and musubi means the knot that ties together it's the knot that binds together the god of musubi in japanese culture is the god of relationship and partnership and marriage Mm. musubi means the thread that ties all of creation together and so when i started doing not love i realized that there was a lot more to rope than just rope bondage a lot more than just tying people up and learning the technical parts of it. There was a much deeper thing happening. What's the connection that happens between two people and how can you develop that connection? And so I was just started, had this idea that I could start teaching some of the open-hearted um, philosophy and movement practices, meditation practices, in addition to the technical rope tying skills. And um, I thought that that would be a great offering. And it turns out it, it mm-hmm. has been. People are loving it. The yeah. feedback that I get is fantastic. People are like, wow, I had no idea a rope play could be like this. Mm-hmm. Because most rope classes, they jump right into the, the technical. How do you tie the rope to this limb? Or how do you tie this chest harness? Or how do you tie the arms behind their back? But with no context. And so, and that's what I was doing in the, in the rope meetups. I was teaching people how do you technically tie something. And people were kind of struggling. They would get caught up in their heads. They'd start to tie, and they'd get a little nervous and frustrated, and it would take them a long time to actually learn how to do a certain tie, and they would leave and probably forget that tie. And that's what happens in most rope classes. You come in, they teach you how to do this thing, you're kind of frustrated, you kind of get it, you go home and you're like, 
uh, how do we do that thing again? Yeah. And that's and it kind of lays like, kind of a kind of a drag because you haven't taken anything away. Mm. In my not love classes, we have a different approach. We start from the of a foundation, and so we start with some open hearted movement practice. Call, we call it gathering chi. And so, how do you gather energy from the universe? How do you feel grounded, centered, and connected inside of yourself first? And from that place, then you can start to connect with your partner. Mm-hmm. And so this adds a much more rich component to it. And, and then from there, we work up through different exercises of, of getting more involved with the rope um, and then eventually get to some rope tying skills. Mm-hmm. But the fundamental part is how do, you, how do you take care of yourself first? Because if you just come into a rope partner from your head, you're like, ah, I want to tie you up. Can I tie you up? And they're like, oh, you know, I don't know. It's a little much. I'm not ready for this. But if you're centered and grounded and your heart's open and your heart connects with the person mm-hmm. and you go up to them and like, hi, can I tie you up now? <laughs> they're like, yeah, they, they feel a lot safer. Is there like breath work involved? So when you're tapping into your partner or the person that you're doing uh, the, the, bef- the, the work with, because um, I'm assuming you recommend coming to the, the courses with a partner or? Well, I hold a, I have a couples workshop. I have a, a singles work, workshop, which is designed for singles. People kept asking me, how do I meet new rope partners? I was like, well, come to my singles rope class <laughs> that I just created. And, uh, and so I kind of make, I kind of let people rotate and through different exercises. And I also have rope jams and, uh, just rope classes, and, and you can come partnered or you can come and, and, and find somebody. So I kind of offer different configurations. If you're coupled, I offer that. If you want to meet singles, I offer that. If you just want to come and, and play, I offer that. And then if you – so if you come with a partner, if I if Amy and I came, and so how do I sort of get to that foundational aspect that you were talking about where it's uh, sort of tuning into each other? Are you doing, like, breath work? Because it's I know it's focused in a lot of meditation. You said you, you incorporate some of the, that work in. I was just – just so our listeners maybe could do it if you're, if you're not available. Uh, well, uh, the one exercise that I teach is called gathering chi. And it's mm-hmm. uh, open your body up and you – Kind of gather energy from the whole universe. You connect to the earth. You connect to nature. You connect to the whole universe. And you start feeling your own chi. You feel your own center. The Japanese call it the hara. Uh, the Chinese call it the dantian. And we call it our, our center. Mm-hmm. And it's like a storehouse of energy. And when you're in your center, you're much more grounded. So doing a little bit of this gathering chi helps you to center yourself so that when you start getting back into your head, your energy kind of rises and you start to kind of, you know, get a little nervous. You can have a, a sense of, oh, let me go back into my center. And from there, you become more grounded and more connected. But there's another step. Once you've kind of have that going, then I, you start to open the heart. And you use the heart to kind of gather this energy. And then you're not just gathering chi, but you're gathering this energy together with love. And so when the hearts are open and you have this energy, you're in your center, your hearts are open, and from that place you can connect more. You just really let, let go of the breath. Uh, once you relax, the breathing just becomes naturally. Ultimately, the breath is an ex- extent, is a expression of the quality of the chi in your body. So when the energy in your body is strong, the breathing just becomes more, more natural. You can focus on the breath, and that really just helps to relax the body and, and quiet the mind. But really, um, really ultimately, the, the chi just, just takes over, and the breath becomes just natural is this about so, so to Taoist? i mean is it like a Taoist perspective of of i mean with, with the chi and kind of using the the nature you know nature and earth to cultivate energy is that what you do in Taoist Taoist practices uh Taoism, that's that's a part of, of that being yeah. connected to, to nature this particular practice shang jen comes from from china okay. from from a, a, a chinese person and yeah. it's like a, it's it's qigong but qigong just means energy mm-hmm. uh, shang jen means energy together with love so how do you cultivate an op- open heart which uh, gives it a little more context mm-hmm. and then just having energy then you have this energy of creation of connection of love of presence of uh, auth- authentic authenticity not just you know power yeah. mm, in the previous it was like in martial arts you develop your key so you have a lot of strength and power and shang jen you open your heart so that you yeah. have that connection which is the ultimately the, the strongest energy in the universe would would be love the most most original en- energy a little, a little bro- so i mean some of the reasons why people are because you explained before first of all i'm like how many boy scouts got kinky later on in life like how much are they, like girl scouts and boy scouts actually introduce people to like their their kind of their their thing that they're into in later in their erotic world um yeah but 
the the various reasons why people are into rope bondage because so you know speaking to like our listeners and some of them who might be brand new are like I've never done rope bondage why do people like it you spoke to you the the feeling of pressure that can feel really nice you spoke to the art of it some people love being the art piece and also doing the art um, you also, and then there's also, you know, the binding and the restraint a- aspect. But can you speak a little more on that? Sort of the various reasons why people seek this out. Maybe you saw it in a movie or a book and thought it looked look kind of kind of sexy and kind of cool. Maybe mm-hmm. you want something new to introduce into your re- relationship. Maybe mm-hmm. it's, um, or maybe you just are, are, are playful. People, so I stopped using the word rope bondage mm-hmm. because it was kind of it wasn't just rope. And that's how you tie people up. Mm-hmm. So for some of the exercises we do is how do you run a rope over somebody's skin? And that can be pretty profound. Just actually the sensual feel of rope starts to feel really delicious in your, in your body. You just, mm-hmm. Your senses get activated. And so you could spend just rope play could just be 20 minutes of running rope over someone's body. And that, that could be enough to get to get. Turned on. Tying a knot. And yeah. you could get different uh, not, not kind of materials that the ro- like you can get silk and right. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure we'll get into right that. Yeah. Silk, bamboo. So, uh, yeah. so some can nylon, be scratchy, but some can feel cotton, really good. Hemp. I really like jute rope, and we can talk about rope and uh, the different kinds of rope. And mm-hmm. jute can be a little scratchier at first, but it's I think it's 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 the best rope. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have really sensitive skin, it might not be for you, um, but but it, it softens up over time, and and the scratchiness maybe just just kind of kind of part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the uh, so so you can run rope over somebody's skin. You can use it just to kind of hold them and move them around. So it starts to have a sense of the polarity. I think that's one of the, the one of the key components of role play is how do you play with polarity? Mm-hmm. So somebody maybe in your relationship it's gotten a little stagnant where be kind of kind of equal, and with a little bit of rope, mm-hmm. there's somebody who has the rope on and somebody that doesn't. So that person, so that right away, it creates more more sense, more dynamic, and mm-hmm. it's more tension, and that that can really juice juice things up. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can do it for a me- meditative aspect when you're put in rope. You, your body starts to release certain chemicals and neurotransmitters and mm-hmm. that helps to really relax the body. It's kind of a natural body feeling. You start to get a little high, a little rope high. And so um, so it can be a really meditative and spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it for, for bondage. Maybe you just want to tie somebody up and, and ha- have play. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to tie them up and you know, spank them more or, or you, you want to have like more of a... a more of a, a DS dominant submissive submissive relationship, and so that 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 can be part of it. A lot of people, I think, see the pictures of rope bondage and see these models just tied up in these intricate positions, and they're like mm-hmm. kind of scared of it, yeah. and they're like, oh, "This is kind of intense." Or I don't know, I don't know. Ceiling, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so a lot of people come. A lot of people are really nervous to come to a, a rope class because they think. I don't know if I'm ready to be tied up for well, an hour and a half. I'm too vanilla for that. Right. That sounds like way too advanced. They come to my class and they're completely surprised mm. because we start with this heart-centered of yourself first. Then we start how do you connect with your partner. I talk a lot about how do you stay aware and present up to your partner during the whole rope experience because it's very easy for someone to get kind of rope-centric and forget about the person, um, to geek out on the knots and forget that there's this gorgeous person that you're actually tying up and that's what's most important so i stress a lot about hey remember your, your partner uh touch them caress them kiss them uh engage with them keep eye contact this is a really Im- important part and so a lot of what i'm teaching is can be applied to any kind of intimate play um it doesn't have necessarily have to do with with rope bondage but um for example i talk a lot about how do you create a container of safety a lot of men especially have no idea that um, women typically can feel unsafe. And I have to explain to them that um, even though inside you know you're safe and, you, of course, you, you know you're trustworthy, um, a lot of women don't feel that way in, a, in like a day-to-day situation. So how do you create a container of safety for your, your, your partner? So I teach them how to ask questions, um, how to check in with them, constantly how to make sure that that they're feeling okay and uh yeah th- i think i really enjoyed that mm-hmm. uh that helping helping guys uh create a more more sense of of, of safety for for a partner we just mm-hmm. I, I know for me especially i didn't even realize that somebody a woman could not feel that safe day to day i was in a room once and somebody asked how many uh people in here you know, watched out for the safeties at some point in the day. Like all the women raised their hand and 
like maybe one guy or, or something. I was like, oh, because mm-hmm. we just don't think of our physical safety. Yeah. Our emotional safety, on the other hand, that's a that's something that's really fragile for us. So mm-hmm. so a lot of the guys start to start to feel like, oh, I'm not worthy or I'm not tying up right or, or I just have to you know do this right. Otherwise, they're, they're going to think I'm kind of a fool or, or something. So so I think men are their emotional safety uh, is is can be can be important to be uh, um, uh, you know watched out for. Uh, but I teach men how to, how to how to stay how to keep their their partner safe mm-hmm. um well, what are, and so you, it's because you're talking about you teaching boundaries and things and, and i mean consent is is it obviously a huge part so you see so i'm just reiterating what you said because i think it's always important we're talking about these topics to 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 go into the consent piece so you're you're teaching people how to advocate you know, ask for what they want advocate for what they want to continuously check in with their person that they're tying up or being tied up by um, as an ongoing process, how to probably also pay attention to body language and different cues, safe words, et cetera. Is there like a specific formula? And I'm sure you spend a lot of time on the consent piece. Yes. Um, you want to make sure that, especially if somebody it's new that you're, you're working with, that you, you both, you know, what's, what's okay. And even if it's something that you've been with for a long time, yeah. it feels really good to hear somebody's yes. Yeah. And it feels really good to be able to express your yes. So, I one practice I make people engage in is to ask questions and have them ask four questions of their partner before they engage. How are you feeling? How's your body? How's your emotions? Um, how do you want to feel in this class or in this you know uh, scene that we're, we're going to do together? How will I know you're feeling that way? Mm. And is there anything that you're worried about feeling or don't want to feel or any kind of concerns that you want to want, want to raise? Mm-hmm. And so I make both partners an, answer both of, of those questions. Mm-hmm. And so that, that develops a lot of um, feeling of safety. Uh, for consent, I help people understand that you really want to make it very clear what you're going to do and what's, what's, what's okay and that that consent can be revoked at any, any time. Mm-hmm. And that consent sounds like, Hell yes! Uh-huh. Doesn't if it sounds like uh, yes, yeah, sure, or maybe yeah, yeah. like that's that that's I guess so. A definite no, yeah. and 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 honor that, and just, and just because you had consent one minute, maybe the next minute she changes her mind, or, mm-hmm. or she, she changes her mind, and mm-hmm. that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. So it can be revoked at any any time. So to be really mindful of of your partner, especially when you're touching certain you know body parts, also make sure that you that what's what's okay and what's what's not so not, not okay it. and typically in, in my classes we're not I mean, we're not getting too sexy mm-hmm. um i think people think they have this idea that there's like some big rope orgy happening and people yeah. are naked and suspended from the ceiling and mm-hmm. everyone's having sex and, and it's not unfortunately not like yeah. that at all yeah. <laughs> yeah. um was it, is it betty martin i don't know if you, her, her work the wheel of consent and she says was it is wanting versus willing mm. and and part of the work is to have people say i you know i want this as opposed to like you know, maybes and all these things. And so, so it's this practice because people are so conditioned to um, not really go and honor their, their like fuck yes or their complete yes to whatever it is they want to do. And so they do, they, they're they tolerant or compliant um, and that people are doing a lot more, uh, a lot more willing than wanting. Mm. You know, that's that like, okay, I guess so versus like, no, I really want this or I really don't want this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's an important lesson uh, no matter what topic you're teaching. And I can speak for myself um and i would say i i think it's wrapped up somewhat with, with my gender identity too and the conditioning that i have that um i feel like i'm more tolerant than a lot of the men that i date that i and i could be wrong but i th- I, I do feel like um there's this people pleaser part of me even when it comes to sex that i have to constantly watch for and and practice like see it watch it and, and practice and then it's like two steps forward one step back so i appreciate and um, that you're bringing that in to kind of highlight that the fuck yes to empower people of all, you know, all genders to, to make that choice. Mm. It's really, really, really important work, especially when it comes to something with that involves rope. OK, time for a quick break. This podcast is made possible by OMGS.com. OMGS is a research based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made tasteful and inspiring short videos to show you techniques on how to pleasure yourself or another vulva. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and has changed their lives. 
So for all you vulva owners or vulva lovers out there who may already be having good orgasms and you want to take it to the next level, or perhaps you want to explore more variety in your playtime, OMGS will have something just for you. With two seasons, one all about internal and the other all about external techniques, it's better than any book or DVD money can buy. To learn more, visit omgs.com backslash shameless. Our listeners get $5 off. Check it out. This podcast was also made possible by Uber Loop. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant great for all kinds of sex. It's less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes. And there are hundreds of doctors who recommend Uber Loop to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks who are experiencing dryness. You never knew lube could be this good. So whether you're an avid lube lover or you've never used lube before, Uber Lube is right for you. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on the body. Uber Lube has endless uses. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth right before an oral sex session, and it totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's gorgeous. It's totally discreet and looks more like a beautiful cosmetic product, so you can even leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX and you get 10% off and free shipping. That's uberlube.com. Go check it out. And now back to the show. With rope bondage, or, or no, not, what did you call it? You called it... Rope play. Rope play. Rope play, rope yeah, play. ironic rope yes. play. So with rope play, let's talk about the, the play part, because I've seen... I've and seen the technique be, and how, how yeah. that, that looks. Because well, well, anyway, what you're talking about, like, there's like the classes where it's t- all technical, and like there's play in it, but like it, it seems like it can be... Uh, some people can kind of bypass the play when it become, all becomes all technique, so I imagine yours has like more, more heart and love and play in it. It becomes more of like a shared, uh, joyful journey. Oh my oh, god, he's just getting dog com- is- he gets comfortable. He yeah. like digs to get comfortable. Good. Yeah, he's digging. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, um, I think when you learn to not be goal oriented, that uh, opens up a lot. So, so you may see a picture in a book of someone tied up, and you think that's what I have to do. I got to tie them up, and that's the, what's going to be successful. But you're missing out on. What happens during that tying? Like, there's so much juiciness. So you can draw out the tying of just putting on putting on a rope harness on, on somebody, like a, like a chest harness. It's not actually any kind of like constrictive, but just kind of a decorative uh, rope piece. Um, it can be a really sensual ex- experience. Mm-hmm. It all depends on what's your presence. Mm-hmm. So I love it when I see people who come in a little stiff, a little worried, and they start to relax mm-hmm. and they start to, to be able to open up to that sensual experience and that connection and what's mm-hmm. possible and to the joy of that. And once you, so a lot of people that I see, they, they, they lose awareness of their, their partner. And when that awareness drops, then the connection drops and the int- int- intimacy drops. So I make sure people do a lot of eye contact. So people will tell me, like, this is the most eye contact I've ever done in my life. I'm like, well, you need yeah. to do more of this because that, that's where the connection is going to happen. That's where your partner is going to really going to feel the, the juiciness. Mm-hmm. Um, this, is, this is my feeling. Yeah. So um, some people may just want to just not have that connection and just do the technical tie. And I think it's missing Missing the musubi. Yeah. Um, there's a term called ja- in Japanese called zanshin, means constant connection. When you have that constant connection, something really beautiful can develop. Um, a lot of trust and a lot of depth and a lot of intimacy and a lot of deliciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that can can really add to I think a, a partner's a partnership's uh, um, enjoyment of of each other. And so, so I think the, the, for me, the rope is more of a visual representation of a connection that's happening. Mm. Um, it, it provides a, a way to explore that, that connection. And it's not so much about the end result being tied up. Because, for example, you think, oh, to be successful, I have to tie you up and you can't escape. And you're going to be tied up for an hour and a half. And, and that's going to be awesome. But the reality, it's not like that. You may... You may just wrap the rope around your partner without actually tying it, just kind of like loosely wrapped around, and that might be enough mm-hmm. for your partner. A lot of people may experience some some, some fear that comes up, mm-hmm. you know, because being bound can bring up a lot of feelings, mm-hmm. um, not safe or not or or something, not not worthy or just all, all, all kinds of feelings. So. I try to make people understand that you work slowly with your partner. Don't have this idea of what you have to do in order to, to have a successful rope experience. Mm. Um, for example, 
Um, my girlfriend sometimes feels um, like claustrophobic or, 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 or anxious about being bound. So I may not actually tie her up in a way that she can't escape, but enough that she feels um, bound. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she could at any time kind of, kind of slip out of it. So that's, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. I don't mm-hmm. feel like I've, I've failed. Um, you may be tying somebody up and put a lot of work into it. And at any at one point, they may be like, I don't know. I think I'm kind of done. Mm-hmm. That might, yeah, that might thing right now in this moment. So, yeah. Or you don't have to actually constrict their body either, right? You can make something beautiful. I mean, I've been, I think in a Midori class, I've been kind of bound and it was just. Oh, you were a demo model. For yeah. That. Oh, and yeah. it wasn't, I had all the use of all of my, my limbs. It was just like a beautiful looking, uh, as you said, chest, like almost like harness. a, yeah, yeah. Like a chest, it was a mm-hmm. chest harness and it looked really cool and your mm. body looks beautiful and it was mm-hmm. with a silk rope. So it felt really good. So you don't necessarily have to take away any of the motion of your, your body. You can actually do it and just feel beautiful. Right. Yeah. Feel beautiful. Feel a little constricted. Have mm-hmm. that, have that, that, that feeling, and then yeah. you have that on, and you're like, you don't want to take it off. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, it's like, my outfit, yeah, yeah. My yeah. Kind of nice. I didn't, I didn't take mine off for a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. I loved it. Oh, yeah, like, oh. she, yeah. And Midori does more of like hers is a performance, right? Hers is an art piece and a performance, which is incredible, and it's you know one of the the mini styles. When I did my. Um, I did a Barbara Corellis who wrote Urban Tantra. I did her Tantra professionals training, and she talks about the overlap between Tantra and the kink world. And because so, I keep thinking that when you speak, I'm like Tantra, Tantra. That's what talking, I was getting. Yeah, yeah. You're talking presence. You're talking heart. You're talking almost like this oneness between these two people, not just like two separate bodies doing two different things. You're creating almost like this is my interpretation is like this oneness this, in this connection, and then you operate from there. Um, and I always love that when, when Barbara Corellis' approach to that, and I mean, and it made me feel safer when we actually did practice in that class. We, would, we were doing, you know, energy, orgasm, breathing, and all these tantra stuff that you, but if you're a tantra person, you know of. But then we had these kink days, and where we were tying each other up and guiding them around, mm-hmm. and sometimes blindfolding the other person, but you were becoming one energy and one unit through it, um, and you know, having someone time that I didn't really know that well because of that, I felt so safe to surrender to w- whatever they were doing because we were there together. And I, I just, I, yeah, I think that that is, um, is, yeah, is, is beautiful. And just, yeah, I really value that, that like with the, with the safety component that can come from that. Sure. Tantra, kink, spirituality, that, that all comes together in, in, in these classes. And that word you just used, uh, safe to surrender. I had a workshop last month that I called safe to surrender. And so we explored, um, what do you do when somebody's actually tied up? So a lot of the rope classes, they teach you how to, how to, to tie. Um, I'm teaching how do you, how do you tie and develop connection and presence and uh, awareness and intimacy. Um, but then there's a whole, a whole art to do what do you do with this person who you just tied up? How do you find out what they want? How do you find out what, what you want? Um, how do you hold space for them to have that experience that they're going to have while, while they're being tied up? A lot of people can go into a deep, a deep space, and you have to honor, honor that. And you won't even know what it's like until you've gone and gone through, the, through, through that, that, that experience. It may bring up things in you that surprise you. Just being bound can, and relaxing into that, I can, it can, I've seen men let go, like be really fearful and just kind of like let go. Uh, um, I think it's, it's hard for men to even to admit that they, that they don't feel safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but but when, they are, when they are in a, in a place where they're, they have a, they're, they're bound and they can relax and really let go, it, it, it releases a lot of conditioning in them and puts, mm-hmm. because gives them a, a space to be able to surrender, to feel safe to, to surrender. Mm-hmm. And when I know when, for, as, as a man, when a man can feel safe to surrender, then their vulnerability opens up. Mm-hmm. And then you can really see a part of them that you may not be able to, to see before. Um, when women feel safe to surrender, that they have their own, you know, everybody has their own experience. I don't mean to use too many gender specific, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, words here, but, um, but there is something, there is a magic in that experience of what do you do with the person that's tied up? Um, you want to play with them. You want, just want to leave, kind of leave them alone and have their, I don't mean leave them alone physically, but I mean not, not be touching them, mm-hmm. kind of let them have their own kind of spiritual experience. There's somebody that wants to, you know, kind of looks at rope as a, like a meditative experience and rope as a sacred object that allows you to go into that space. Mm. So not just like, what's this kinky heart based thing, but what's this more of like, what's this meditative sacred mm. space that mm. we can come into that we can't in our normal world. And we're free to do whatever when we're just kind of like made to not move. It kind of, we can drop into some things, drop into some, some special place. Mm-hmm. Um, get kind of a rope 
rope high. Yeah. What do you so for folks out there? Because a lot of the folks that listen aren't necessarily close to a a shop or a workshop space where they can learn about rope bondage or rope play. What do you suggest they do after after they listen to this podcast? Like, wow, I really want to explore that. Do they buy books? Do they go online to YouTube? Or do you? I mean, how does what? We can fly to. To, you know, California, oh, come, 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 come yeah. to Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. <laughs> uh, actually, do online sessions. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, awesome. It's a little trickier. Um, it's much. I prefer being in in person, but it, it's it. We can definitely have a, a wonderful session on online, um, and, and I talk people through the the, 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 the whole whole process. Mm. Um, it's, it can be a little harder to see sometimes to, to kind of guide people on 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 the the corrections, um, but but yeah, but but definitely. Uh, so I teach o- online. Where was you? And then I have some some videos too. Mm-hmm. Um, website, yeah, okay. that, that that I've made. But that's a good question because uh, probably have me fly out and teach a class in your local area is probably the, the best answer because I don't know a lot of heart centered uh, rope instructors who are teaching from the foundation of how do you start with yourself first, mm-hmm. getting grounded, open, connected, and then how do you keep that connection with your partner. Um, Lee Harrington, who was a rope bondage, he, he's written a, c- a couple of books. Um, in his books, he he touches on on that. I think I have one of one what of his here. Yeah, looking over here in your book collection. No, I don't have one of his here. Yeah, I see. That. Um, this is Shabari. Right, I have Better one book. For right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, find. Um, because well, reading a book by by the way, like there's pictures in here and there's information, but we're such experiential learners. I mean, I think you could look at that. Maybe if you did Boy Scouts, you'd be like, "Oh, I understand." But but it just seems like something that if you really want to dive into it, that having that experiential practice is with a you know a guide is the is the way is to go. the way to go. Yeah. Right? It seems it seems like it. It needs. It needs a mentor of, yeah. of, of, you know, some sense. Yeah, I've had people come up to me and say, I've been looking for 30 years for someone to teach classes like, like you do. And they just, they don't exist. They get right into the hardcore, you know, how do you tie them up or how do you spank them or how do you do this or, or, or that to them, but not how do you develop it in yourself first and how do you keep that connection going and how do you, how do you, you know, work through all, all that stuff as a, as a, as a f- foundation. Um, and it just it makes things so much better. When I when I started to introduce some of this um, meditation and awareness, connection and, and presence, when I finally got to the actual technical tie that I was going to present, people learned it so much faster. Mm-hmm. I was in awe. I was like, "This is a tie, a knot." People would spend an hour trying to learn. They just learned it in like five minutes mm-hmm. because they're more centered and more grounded, and they have more this more presence and more ability to not be caught up in their head. Uh, and 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 it's it's fascinating. It was fascinating to to, to watch, and so um, I would. Yeah, I don't have a good recommendation on. Go to your I, website. I don't don't yeah. know a, yeah. a lot yeah. of other uh, you know heart centered kind of kink, uh, but 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 ask you know if you if you go into an instructor, ask them like what what are you teaching? How are you teaching? What's what's your philosophy mm-hmm. for teaching? Um, and we'll go to your what's your website again? We're going to say it again at the end of the podcast. Too, not not dash love. Where's it with a K? K no T dash yeah. love yes. dot, dot com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a reminder. We'll get back. We'll get you back there in a, in a second and say that again. I was just curious if there was a, any uh, you know platform, but yeah, I guess it is something specific and and different. So you can just reach out to you. I yeah. think. Yeah. Fly them out. Yeah, yeah, I have this idea of, of, of a book and a video series yeah. so that I can share this this, this practice. I think it's such a, a gift to people who who kind of want to do something kinky but are a little intimidated and don't really know where to start. And yeah. like I said, see these pictures of these models who are just like, you're like I don't know if I, I'm not ready for that. I kind of yeah. want to do something, but I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um, and so what I offer is someone that so they can start at a very – foundational level a like heart centered level and then work their way up just running rope over someone's body or just holding it around them or spinning it around them or just doing a chest harness or just um you know it's something like that as, as, as and that's all it has to be or you can learn there's only only a couple of real technical things you need to know it's not a lot of like i say uh, i learned it in boy scouts and i learned a lot of knots i only use two, maybe, maybe three knots mm. in any of the rope stuff there's a, a couple uh, techniques and a couple knots, and with, if you know those, you can pretty much do anything in, in any of 
of these books. It's not very not. It's not very <laughs> uh, naughty. It's not. I mean, there's not. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a lot of knots. Knots. There's, there. there's a lot of frictions, which are just kind of more 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 of a wrap to keep uh, the ropes in place than actually mm. tying um, tying a, a knot. When you get into suspension work, then you want to really you really want to work with somebody who hands Those on advanced, can teach you yeah. the advance because you need to know proper tensioning oh, and you need to know oh. the. The, the load weights of whatever you're working on. You need to know the, 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 rope, uh, the rope strengths that, that you're working on. So I don't, I don't teach uh, suspension at, at this point. A lot of people dangling from ceilings. But you definitely yeah. want to take that part slow. Don't be in a hurry to lift your partner up off the, off, off the ground. Yeah. Um, but then get some one-on-ones and a lot of personal one-on-one training. Being like an investment to put all the hooks in the right places too. Like on the ceiling, yeah, yeah. and you want to make sure they're done. It's done well. Yeah, um, you want it, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, is there any injuries? Injury? As a disclaimer, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, things. I. It's not. I mean, but when people get in, into these sort of things, you know, they're just starting. It. Like it's not like you said. Don't take it. Don't. You know, have goals and make sure. Don't make it ha- have to be the absolutely perfect, right? Like you're good. That's. I think that's one thing for sexuality that works well for me is like when it's awkward to just be like, well, that was awkward. You know, that was. You know, I tried this knot here. It just fell apart. It didn't really go well. So to have a sense of humor or, or play and openness for things to not be perfect, but. We also want safe and people not falling from the ceiling too. So, you know, there's there's kind of like that fine middle middle ground of how to do things with uh, more intention. It sounds like presence is just such gold. A key yes, to this. Yeah. to every to all these things to having a deeper, more powerful experience. Whether it's from being bound to um, to losing control to the art of it to the sensations. Because in we you know when you're not present, you're going to miss out on all of those things. But when you are present, then you have those, and then it helps with safety. It helps with connection. There's just so much there in the power of presence that, um, as we talk about the podcast all the time, but I just can't get enough of it. So, what kind of things do you need for um, rope play? Rope. <laughs> so and where can can you just get it at Home Depot? You yeah. can get. Um, we are not sponsored by Home Depot. No, I just. You uh, can get nylon rope uh, anywhere. Cotton rope is cheap, easy to find, but uh, frankly, I think it's terrible to use. It's soft okay. and it's nice, but it's it stretches and and it's uh, it's just not. Not not good. The best not rope good. I love your knots. Is is, is jute rope? I, jute, I okay. I have a jute rug. J U T E. Okay. Yes. And the very jute rope right now. that I use is handmade uh, by rope bondage experts, mm-hmm. and it's um and then I, I hand condition it through a multi step process of uh, mm-hmm. of polishing it and running it over a flame and putting it through a carabiner and coating it in beeswax and uh, baking it in the oven and mm. coating it in whole wow, there's oil. there's a lot of love that goes in there. Is this juice? A lot of not love in that. Yeah, it's, must it's, smell, it must smell great. Oh, yeah. It smells like blood, sweat, cookies? and tears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and it softens up over time and it doesn't stretch and holds knots really, really well. And I like, I'm attracted to this silk skin. rope, though. This that's uh yeah that's or nylon. It, it's nylon pretty. Rope. It's pretty. It's shiny. You can wash it easily, but it just doesn't have the the the, the liveliness yeah. feel. Oh. This uh, the jute rope. It just has a. It, it's light. It's it's beautiful and it's it's a, alive, mm. and uh, that's that definitely my preference. Hemp is okay, uh, and and people use hemp. It's softer. Mm. Uh, it's a little heavier, and it's but it's a little more limp, mm. and uh, but people people love it. But but I I I. I Typically, you use jute rope, and I push that on all the people that come to, uh, to, to, to my, my workshops. And I see you have safety scissors. If you people don't know what safety scissors are, they are angled at the end, and they don't have a sharp point, so you can easily cut. This is what, like, paramedic, we used to cut right. some EMT, clothes safety off. shears. Yeah, yeah they're, they're good if there's a fire <laughs> or, you know, like, earthquake, or the mother-in-law comes to the door, and you have to <laughs> quick get them out of the ropes. Uh, yeah. That Hurry said, up. you don't, you don't, you want to, if, if you're, being tied up and you start to feel like maybe I kind of want to get out of these ropes. Don't speak up sooner than sooner than, than later. Don't wait until the last minute and be like, get me out now. And and kind of, because it's a lot safer just to, you know, easily uh, take somebody out. Um, there's a, one book here that I brought and it's one of my favorite books and I, I show it to everybody that comes. It's called the little, uh, guy to getting tied up mm. written by Evie Vane. She's a San Francisco uh, mm. rope uh, ed, uh, teacher and ed, 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 educator. And she wrote uh, two, both of these books here. This is for 
rope. Better for, bondage for, for everybody. Yeah, it's kind of like different different body types. I like that she's not just showing all these like s- s- right. super skinny twig models. The, the interesting thing about this little guy getting tied up, it's one of the only books written from the rope bottom's point of view. So oh, it teaches yeah. you how to, how, how to stay safe oh. as, as the one being tied up. So I recommend that for both people. I like this with the one big toe behind the back mm-hmm. too, tied up to the... There's April actually loves hog ties, so that's perfect. I <laughs> do. I love like one of the you had a toe hog tie. When the wrists and the ankles are bound together behind the back, I think it's really hot. Have you had that? Have you been? Hog-tied? I've never been tied up. I have a hog-tied a restraint, thing. like a restraint system that's that has um, that's like the hog tie for mm-hmm. ankles and wrists. But mm-hmm. I've never had rope. Um, have you had have you had rope on you ever? Only that Midori uh, class. Uh-huh. That was the only time. I've never had anybody that's had an experience with rope bondage or rope play at all in my in my you know sexual prowesses around the world no one's ever trying to tie me up i would be open to I'm it i'm teaching a singles class on the 14th oh you nice you um and on the 14th of december yeah, in santa yeah. cruz yes oh cool yep. that's good if anybody's in town to know where are you teaching it at uh, I have a studio in, in Felton. Oh, perfect. I, okay. This might be coming out later, yeah. though. Oh, it's going to be coming out later. So, okay. But would you have any other workshops coming yeah, out? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I teach about three or four uh, classes a uh, month. A month. I'm oh, also awesome. teaching, I'm also reaching out into the San Francisco and the Bay Area. I teach in Oakland sometimes, okay. and then I would love to travel. So if you're out there and you want to have a really awesome, open-hearted, rope-bonded, rope-play teacher come out in your area, mm-hmm. they definitely reach out to me. I, 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 I want to oh, travel and teach us more. It's just it's really f- fulfilling. Yeah. And it, you, found your, you found one of your mini callings. Yeah. Did you partner into it? Does she? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's she, cool. She's definitely been really supportive yeah. of it. Awesome. Um, and the, you know, one of the part we go over is, is what do you, how do you take care of the person that afterwards when the oh, ropes do, do, do come off? That, that's really, really important because it can be really intense coming out of rope. So What do you suggest do you do that? for folks for aftercare? Talk to them. Talk to the person. See what they need. Um, sometimes you can get really cold, so a blanket's good. Chocolate's good. Cuddles go a long way. Um, um, and then checking in with them for the, after, you know, the, the next day or, or, or so and seeing, seeing how that was. Pan- whatever whatever <laughs> works for the person. I want pancakes. And both people might need it too. So it's yeah. important to know the person being tied up needs it just as much as the person who, who did tie. Um, they may have some, oh, did I do it well enough or did this, this or that. And so both, both people could use some good aftercare. Mm. And the other thing I want to talk about was I really like the shameless part of, the, of your, 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 your title because a lot of people – are a little nervous about being open to rope play or even discussing it with people. They feel like a little shameful mm-hmm. of, of it. I know even for me, when I started to do, I, I didn't really tell anybody of, of my friends about teaching uh, rope play at, at p- pure pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, I just didn't know how they would respond, I guess. And so, and then when I started to do not love, I wasn't even that open about it because I kind of didn't want people to think I was some weird I want to be known as the, I want to be known as the open-hearted person, mm-hmm. not the, the kinky rope, rope guy, person. Yeah. <laughs> and and but the, then but the people that would come into my workshops would be like normal everyday people, like a really sweet people. It's not like some crazy, weird everybody in leather and tattoos, but it's mm-hmm. like normal people, the everyday sweetest humans, people. And yeah. so I started to realize, well, I need to represent them, and so I submit, I've been more vocal about mm-hmm. what I do, and and that. And now you're on a podcast. That, now I'm on a podcast, <laughs> and the, you know the gigs up, and um, but yeah, I, I I would encourage if you feel shameful about it. There's a lot more people out there who are into it than you probably think. There was yeah. a, a sex study that showed that 50 percent of adults have some kind of bondage, just some kind of primary fantasy restraint or so sort. right yeah. so uh you're not alone yeah. if you think you're into rope uh or you just want to play or you, you know you don't have to do some of these advanced ties you're seeing you can just get a piece of rope and you know just play with it mm-hmm. a, a little bit see what it feels like on, on your skin see what it feels mm-hmm. like ra- wrapped around um and then get some yeah get some kind of instruction so you know the basics of, of rope rope safety and where where not to tie different parts of the body there's some sensitive parts you, you want to avoid mm-hmm. where there's nerves coming up or around mm-hmm. around joints and mm-hmm. of course the, the neck and, oh yeah um mm-hmm. so there's there's you know for the most part you're going to be safe as long as you're keeping 
aware of your partner and checking in with them constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that said, you should, yeah, definitely read, read books. Read as many books as, as you can. Get as much education as possible. Come to yeah. as many of my classes as you can. Yeah. And, um, Book private sessions. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really cool that you're doing that on, I've never heard of anyone doing that, doing like, you know, a, a rope, rope play, uh, we're, we're online sessions with people. I think that's really, really awesome because a lot of our listeners, don't live in progressive cities like mm-hmm. like we do. You know, they don't. You can't just go to a shop in Santa Cruz. They live in Ohio or they live in uh, Canada or something. And you know, so it's. And I mean, we have listeners all over. So I think that's a really great offering. Can you remind our listeners where about your website? How they can find you? I don't know if you do. So you do. You're on Facebook and things. I don't know. If you on do Facebook, uh, the Facebook page is called Why Not Love. W H Y K N O T L O V E. Um, website is not dash love dot com. Uh, Instagram is why not love and I'm not love coaching at gmail.com oh, all with a K N O T and yeah like it's not love not love it and is what love upcoming so you have one on the 14th and this is going to air after that uh, 19, 2019 I was going to say 1919 but we're away mm-hmm. 2020. I'll have several classes in Santa Cruz area at least every every week are they on sorry, your website every, when you're, when you're every doing every month okay. usually sometimes I get behind in posting but um, they're on my Facebook page for, okay. for sure um, so yeah I have at least three in the Santa Cruz area and then I'll be teaching in Oakland and San Francisco and uh, San Jose and I have some people in Sacramento that want me to come out and some people in LA want me to come out and San Diego and I haven't booked any, any anything yet for those places, but they're on they're in in the works. Okay, and um, watch out for my you know uh, book and mm-hmm. vi- video series coming out because I think this is an important way to to share this with people. Mm-hmm. It takes away the kind of the extreme, just tie them up and gives them a foundation. Because when people leave my mm-hmm. workshops, they may forget the technical. Not that they, they tried to learn, but they will not forget the sense of, of connection mm, and presence and intimacy mm-hmm. and the tools that they had to develop that in, in my class will stay with them. The feeling of the heart opening and the sense of musubi, of connecting hearts and hearts together. That philosophy, I believe, will 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 stay with them and it'll help them not just in their role play, but in all aspects of their life. When you go through life with a big open heart, it's just so much of you can blossom and the connections you have that are possible and the strength that's possible. And you can you have a much better... People think open heart, maybe that's weak. But no, no. You, then you're more able to assert your boundaries and speak up for what you need. Have and, pleasure. And what you want. And, and have pleasure yes. and enjoy things. And this all, I thought open the heart, like I said, it was weak, boring thing to do. Um, but it's really the strongest quality that a man or a woman or anybody can cultivate is a, is, is a big open heart full of unconditional love. And mm-hmm. so... Um, yeah, that's why that's why I'm I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Let's crack those hearts wide open. Crack them open. My, my Release vision. the kraken. <laughs> well, I I absolutely would be totally into exploring more about bondage, and I we're going to tie her up right after the show. Yes, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> With the jute, bro. <laughs> Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much for being here and for the work that you're doing. And I can see how passionate you are about mm. it, which is really beautiful. We love passion. it seems like you're, you're doing what inspires you and it's helping other people. So thank you. And um, to all of our listeners out there, definitely check out some bondage. If you, if you even are curious about it, why not try just a, even a little bit of a rope around your wrist. Uh, you saw, I see what you did there with the why not. Did yeah. You just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> why not? Love. So it's, you know, today is, it could be the first day of something that you don't even know you love. And uh, we thank you, though, for being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. And we see you next Tuesday, maybe on Friday, maybe at the grocery store on Saturday. You never know. So, all right, y'all, we love you. Ciao for now. Thanks for having me on. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.